بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته This is kind of a upsetting episode but it's something I feel like it's so important to realize what's going on in the world right now and to actually like reflect on it and ponder upon it you know how, you know how we always have those conversations where it's like we realize that nothing in this world is coincidental everything in this world is calculated like there's math like everything in this world is calculated there's portioned Allah has made it so Allah has decreed everything so if something happens you better ponder if you step in a puddle you better ponder there's a reason for that Anything that goes that happens in a like, and especially for the Muslim, anything that happens in a Muslim's life, you better ponder. You better ponder. This is the world of doing. This is not the world of recompense. So you better ponder what's going on in this world. And a lot of people like, like the dunya, the like the worldly life, it's fleeting, it's fleeting desires. It means nothing in the eyes of Allah. But what you do, that could be that could like that could make or break you, subhanAllah. In this world and in the next. And that means a lot because when we think about like the things that happen, especially not even just for our lives, but in the lives of the ummah, mm -hmm. like we have to, we tend to forget like, yeah, we live our own lives. We go through our own hardships, but the ummah has hardships. Like what's going on right now, not just in Palestine and, uh, but also with the earthquakes, you know, the, the people displaced, the refugees, all these types of things, these things happen to happening to the Muslims, Muslims being persecuted. This is supposed to affect you as a Muslim as well. This is supposed to affect us because we are believers. And when the believers are suffering, then it feels like everybody else is suffering. Because we're like one body. Yes, yeah, we're exactly. one, no, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm going to say something crazy right now. One is that every single Muslim on earth should take account accountability. What happened in the battle of Uhud, the Muslims, they suffered a casualty from one person. From one person, he didn't follow the instructions of the Rasulullah. So I want every single person on earth reflect on their lives. Pal like pal what's happening to Palestine, like if we don't change our ways, what else do you expect? Of course, what does Allah say in Surah Al-Baqarah? He says Allah does not change the condition of the people unless the people change themselves. So if we're out here doing wrong, right? Mm -hmm. We're out here engaging in haram, right? And we're not doing anything to change the circumstance and bad things are befalling upon us. What else did we expect? Did we expect to go against Allah and for then for Allah to help us? And then here's another point. Were the people who were better than us, the Sahaba, were they not tested as well? Mm -hmm. So like we, obviously this is something which is so shake, like this, this shakes, this shakes the Umar. Like, like me personally, like it hurts. Like when you see the videos of the people, especially in Palestine, like subhanAllah, I'll be like, oh my, I can't believe this. Especially me, because I remember, I remember in Sudan, like I'm not trying to compare it to what's happening in Palestine because it's way worse. But in Sudan, in the, the massacre in Khartoum in June, Man, it was it was a crazy feeling, and I can't imagine imagine feeling that every single day for fifty years. No, no, Subhanallah, I one hundred percent agree with you because like the other day I was even I was pondering upon it, I was thinking about it, and it just really enraged me how like how the wrongdoers are like it feels like they're gonna get away with it, but obviously me as a Muslim I know that they're not gonna get away with it. This is only gonna be temporary. But see what you just said right there though, like it feels like these people they get away with it in this dunya, like oh they can get away with hurting the Muslims, even though the Muslims are supposed to achieve victory no matter what. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises the Muslims victory, it doesn't mean in this dunya. It means he promises them victory in the hereafter where it really matters. Because think about it, like um, it's so easy that when something hard hurt, like comes to the ummah of the Muslims, it's so easy to be like, why is Allah doing this? How come they're winning and we're not? When we're the Muslims, we're the mm -hmm. believers, right? It's also easy to, like, I know this might sound like, it's also easy to point fingers. Him, 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 him. You, 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 you. Him, 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 him. Like, you never, like. The reflection starts in yourself. Yeah, it starts with yourself. What are you, what have you done? Because this, because, like, like I said, Uhud, think about it. When Allah said, like, what, what they said, they were, they were shaken. They said, well, how could this happen? Allah said, Qul huwa min indi, min indi anfusikum. Like, it is from yourselves. Indeed, Allah is surely over all things competent. Allah is mm -hmm. capable of doing it. Allah is capable of doing all things, but it was from yourselves. Yeah, speaking of being capable and speaking about what you were saying earlier, this is why I love the ayah from Surah Ibrahim, verse 42, when Allah says, and do not think Allah is unaware of what the wrongdoers do. He only delays them for a day when their eyes will stare in horror. This right here, like, look, just, just ponder about it. And all Allah says in the Quran, do they not ponder upon the Quran? Just think about this ayah. Think about it. You really think you really think Allah's uh, Allah's help is not there? You think Allah's not going to deal with the wrongdoers? You think Allah's not going to serve justice? Allah is the most just. Mm -hmm. Who else is going to serve justice better than Allah? And if anything, this just brings more iman and more in faith that there is a day of judgment, and that 
the people will be called accounted for every single one of their actions. And this is why we need a day of judgment. Think about it. Think about, think how it would feel in our mindset, knowing that there's no day of judgment, thinking that, oh, these people who commit mass mur murder or these people who wrong the next person, that they're just going to get away with it. Once they die, it's over with. No, like, what a sad reality to live in. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah for, for Islam, alhamdulillah. right? Speaking on Alhamdulillah for Islam, whenever something hard strikes a person or a group of people, you see you see the true colors. You see the true... One, one thing I want to say is, man, Allahumma barik to the, all the mosques out there that are, the, the roads are filled, they're, they're setting up donations for Palestine, they're making du'as. Like, I've seen, I've been in the mosque, and I have rows and rows and rows of people, and the, the imam is making du'a, and I'm like, man, subhanAllah, like, Allahumma barik. You see, you see, like, you know, like, the, at least we, we got no, to look on, at the, like, on, that's an alhamdulillah for the ni'mah of Islam, wait, you know wait. what I'm saying? No, but one thing you guys got to remember is, it's not just them that's affected. The whole ummah is being affected. There's many countries, many people being affected by tragedies, by natural disasters, by things that we've been warned about in the Quran. Not, not just in the Quran, in the Sunnah of the Prophet Prophecies, prophecies. Like, like increased earthquakes. You know, times where the Muslims will be in so much distress, there will be so much calamity rampant until the point where so much corruption is spread. The way, the way that uh, we know that the truth sayer will look like the liar and the liar will look like the true sayer. These types mm. of things, we're living in these day and ages and where uh, people will uh, be wearing clothes but they'll appear naked. Like, we're living in these times. We're living in these times. Like, these are the times where it really is gonna get tough. This is a fitna for us and it's tougher than you than people like are, are led to believe. Like, we don't perceive it as, as difficult as it really is. And we have to actually look at it like this because a lot of people, they're always talking about when the end times are going to come, when the mm -hmm. math is going to come, when the Dajjal is going to come. But do you know how scary that is? Do you know how scary it is, that, like, knowing the times that we live in right now? Like, we're young. We're young. We're, we're one of the youngest generations. But what does the end times mean? The end times mean the greatest fitness, where the real believers will be shown in the light and the... The believers who say we are believers will be shown in the dark. Those will be the hypocrites. Those will be the disbelievers. Like and that's so scary to me. I used to think like, oh yeah, man, I want the Mahdi to come so I can go to so I can go to war. But what if I'm on the other side? Exactly. What if I'm on the side of the dead? What if I say, no, oh, I that's think a, I that's can see scary, the dead. That's the scary part. That's the scary part. I, I agree with you. The jal. You know what the jal is? I, I was thinking about this. I was so crazy because you know how uh, the like. I'm not gonna say it, but like in the media, in the media, you know, there's there's a whole lot of propaganda going on, mm. and like people are in confusion. They don't know anything. They don't know what's real and what's wrong. Oh. The jail deception. Think about the tools of the jail and think about how easily you can be deceptive. How easily you could be on the wrong side. And uh, look, think about it. We 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 fall into test every single day. And look, matter of fact, we fall into sin, right? We 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 grow weak. Now imagine we're living in a day and age where people don't even know what what gender they are. Mm -hmm. Now imagine what the, the jail can bring. And remember, this is gonna be the greatest test. You really think that the judge is not gonna come knocking hard? You really think he's not gonna come and swing and finish you? Like you should be, you should be, like trying to build your iman and questioning your iman. You think that you think this is sweet? It's not sweet. No, but but speaking on on what you said in Surah Naam, Allah says, "Say He has the power to unleash torment, whether it be above or below you." Now think about that. Allah is telling you, Allah is telling you that He has the power to unleash torment, whether it be above or below you. Now think about the state of the ummah, all these earthquakes that are happening, etc. Right? How many signs is Allah gonna send you? How many signs does Allah send you a day? How many times is it going to take for you to wake up, bro? You know, now, look, crazy. look, he, said, he says this explicitly. All right? All right no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like, it's crazy because people like to call these things like natural or whatever. Like, these things happen. Like, no, this doesn't happen without the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like, I'm you saying. don't think these things like, were not appointed in yes. time? Like, you think that earthquake, if it didn't happen that day, it wasn't going to happen another day? Like, no, it happened that day because Allah planned it that day. Like, like what's happening in the world no, right now? All no these events. There's no such thing as a coincidence. You, if there's something happening right now, you better pause. Yeah, there is. Yeah, you there is no think randomness. About it. You better think about it. There is no. There is. Yeah, like remember we were talking about. There is no random. There's no such thing as random. Every, no everything. Everything is decreed. There's no such thing as luck. Like, yeah, exactly. I, I don't said, believe exactly. Yeah. I don't believe in luck. Everything in this Allah's hands. Everything is everything. Allah decreed everything. Who's the one doing it? It's Allah. Now look, God listen, listen. Allah. Say he has the power to unleash torn, whether it be above or below you. Now look, think about this. How many times does Allah send you? How many times does Allah send you a sign? But yet we still sit here. We're still smoking, drinking, going to the clubs, not changing ourselves, not praying our five daily prayers, delaying our prayers, still listening, whatever it may be, right? We're still engaging in that. And Allah sends you how many signs a day? Look at the state of the ummah today and you're still doing what you're doing. Like I said, we're, the change starts within yourself. How can you expect to change the ummah and you can't even change yourself? Mm -hmm. like, and you see so many know. people like, they still live in la-la land. They see these things happening right in front of them and they either don't know how to choose a side or they don't know what to do. They don't know how to seek any knowledge about it. But really it's their arrogance in their own heart. Mm -hmm. Like they're afraid to admit that the, this is real life. Like life is real and there's 
this is not how it just ends. Like you can't look at someone, see that they're going through something so horrible and you know, they perish and you just say, that's it for them. There's nothing after this. Oh, but like, how would that mean for your life if you're living beautifully? Like, well, that's subhanAllah for those people who don't believe in and hereafter. Like, you, you know, you know what's earlier. crazy? You know what's crazy? Is the people being trialed versus the people not being trialed. On the day of judgment, you know, Allah, Allah on, in Surah Takath, you know what it says? And then on that day, we will ask them about their blessings. Mm -hmm. They're gonna, I, we're gonna be, that's I, one of the most scariest verses in the Quran. I just got goosebumps on my spine. I'm wearing a jacket. You will be asked about your blessings, your eyes. What are you gonna say? What are you gonna say? Your, your nose, what are you gonna say? The food that you ate, what are you gonna say? Your mom, your dad. You don't have a mom and dad? Your clothing, your, your house, what are you gonna say? Islam, Islam is a blessing. What are you gonna say? What did you do with your Islam? Your youth, what did you say? What are you gonna say? You're gonna shut up because you, you know you know who's gonna testify you too against you too? You know who's Allah's the judge. You know who's gonna be the attorney, the prosecutor? Yourself. Your skin, your skin, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your ears. That's who, that's who's gonna prosecute you. And, and don't think for a second you're gonna be able to lie, you're gonna wiggle out. No, you're not gonna wiggle. You're not gonna wiggle. It's gonna be over for you, you're gonna be destroyed. Depending on how you lived your life. Allah. And look, speaking of that, in Surah Kaf, Allah says, we only set the signs as a warning. You as a Muslim, you should be taking this as a warning. Really mm -hmm. reflect upon yourself. Like, what can I really do to change? And here's the other thing. The shaitan will get you to think for yourself that there's nothing that you can do for your brothers in Palestine or for the people in Afghanistan or for the people in Sudan. There's a million things you can do. First of all, the first thing you can do is make dua. That's the most you can do. That's the most. And the next thing is, even if you donate, let's say a, a penny, a penny. You don't know how the, what that penny can do. You don't know how much that penny is worth in the eyes of Allah. But the shaitan will tell you, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's, just it's nothing. It's just, it's, just, little, it's just little. So why It's just it? little. Then you get into that mindset of not donating. Not, now all of a sudden, look, not, you, don't, you donate nothing. Some motion is better than no motion. Always. <laughs> this, this is a good thing to talk about. Because I even ask myself, what can we do? One thing, one thing I know that we can all do is better, is better ourselves. Stop sinning. Stop with the playing games. Stop with the missed Allah. Stop with the late prayers. You got you to gotta hop on your thing. Like, this is from ourselves. The calamities that were like, if you see an ummah, you don't think just because you're not in the, in the fire that you're not being affected. The ummah is one body. And look, speaking about dua, remember what we were just talking about right before this episode. Imagine you have Muslims. They believe in the most merciful God. They're merciful themselves. They believe in the Prophet ﷺ. They see how the Prophet ﷺ conducting himself. Now imagine these same people are making dua, praying on your downfall because you, mis you, yeah, you mistreated them. You wronged them. Imagine. Imagine the Muslims, they're lined up in ro rows of prayer and these people are making, making dua, dua against it. Yes. And the dua of the oppressed is not rejected. Is not rejected. SubhanAllah. Like think about the oppressors, the, the enemies of Allah. Think about how evil you have to be. The, the enemies of God, think about how evil you have to be. And look, I, look, months ago, months ago, I heard a thing. It was like, you never know who's, you never know who's really the friend of Allah. You never know who you can backbite or slander. And then that person, that person is the friend of Allah. And now all of a sudden, You've angered Allah. You've hurt. You've hurt his slave behind his back. What is that going to do to you? You know. You know. Like within the midst of all this, I've seen videos of like, like, I, like I reflected. Like I, I, I thought about this. Like, think, look at how merciful, merciful Allah is. Look at how merciful Allah is. Look, hold on, about to cook. You, I've seen videos of Palestinian men. Like I've seen them. There was some of them were smiling. I saw a video of one man specifically. I remember the words. I only watched the video once, but I remember everything he said. He said. Why are you, why are you saddened? Why are you saddened? Like, why are you grieving? This is only, this is only a little bit. We will be martyrs after this. Jannah, Jannah is right next to us. Like, why are you saddened? What, 70, 70, you'll be able to uh, uh, intercede for 70 people. I was like, bro, look at the iman on this person. Look at how merciful Allah is for him to look in the face of death, danger, agony, torture. Like, like this is like, they're in, they're, they're trapped. What, what can they do? They're suffocated. For him to look at that in the face and say, and say, why are you grieving? Like he's surprised. Why are you grieving? Like, are you kidding? Look at the mercy, the mercy of God upon this person. No, but to okay. look in the to look in the face of any danger, to look in the face of any trial, any like misfortune upon you, and say, and like, you're still grateful. You're still you're still like, you're you're a plain field. You're not shaking. Yeah, speaking of gratefulness, I also saw a video of a guy. Look, his house was destroyed. His whole neighborhood was destroyed. Everything around him was destroyed. And I'm telling you, you see the the tears in this man's eyes, and his eyes are red. You see distress, and he's still smiling. He, the guy asked him, "How are you doing?" He said, "Alhamdulillah." He was looking around in his blessings. He said, "At least he survived." Oh, even the cat survived. He pets the cat too. They let the cat go. Like, look, Alhamdulillah. Like this guy is literally smiling in the middle of distress. Like, have you ever seen a man cry and and smile at the same time? I don't know. Listen. Think, like what what this reminds me of is think about the gift of, of iman right like think about the gift of iman 
when things are so hard for you, but you have iman, you have faith in your heart for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his promise and what he has planned for you, then things become easier because you have something to rely on. You have something to turn back on. And this is for those people who think that religion is just a fluke or religion is fake or they don't believe in what we believe in or whatever. Because when we have what we have, when you have what Islam has, you can turn to Allah and everything will be all right. I can just turn to Allah with my hands in the air, no matter what I'm going through, and I will feel okay because I know that what I what I just said was heard. Me crying out to my Lord, it was heard. And it's not going for no reason. You may think it's going for no reason, but really, even if that were the case, for me in my heart, I believe that I'm taken care of because of what I just did. I'm taken care of because I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But can you say the same when you go through something, you have to scramble to find out what's going on. How do you fix this, this and that. Knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's affairs are in, uh, the affairs of you are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what it you believe. It lightens your burden. And that's why, you that's feel why, the peace in your heart. You know, you know this, this highlights the arrogance of like people who don't believe in a God who are, who, or who mock religion. We want to know why? Because when... Uh, if the same affliction were to afflict them, who would they call to? Th they will be calling to someone, but they will be who are, who are they going to call to? Bro. They mocked everyone, but they're going to call. And that reminds like, me, like that look, reminds that's, how, that's how Allah, it highlights that their arrogance. reminds me of the questions Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will ask on the day of judgment when er He's taken the soul of everyone, when everything, every living thing has uh, its soul taken. Mm -hmm. After the angel of death takes its own soul, <inaudible> yeah. After his soul is taken from him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask, where are they at? Where are the kings? Where are the people of authority? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, where to whom is the dominion today? Yeah. Who, who, owns, who owns the day of judgment? Who owns the heavens and the earth? Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns it. Who's, who are you going to call to? You're gone. Everybody's gone. Who's left? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa When I first watched that video, I think, I think I cried because of like, I was like, yo, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When everything is gone, who's going to answer? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can answer. Not the heavens and the earth, they can, they're destroyed. Everything is destroyed. What's left is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or whatever Allah says in the Quran, for them, there is no helper, no intercessor. Like just thinking about that is just so crazy. Like imagine you have Allah and his, and his messenger against you. What are you going to do? Who are you going to call upon? Who's going to be there to help you? You can't help yourself. You just You're doomed. It, yeah. you, get, you get all of mankind, all of jinn kind of help you, whatever it may be. You're still going to lose. You have Allah and his messenger against you. It just highlights the arrogance, bro. That's so crazy to me. And, even and the, the fact, the fact that I can't see like how someone could possibly possibly live their life like that makes me like afraid. Cause imagine they think the same thing as for me. Like it's like I, I could just I could fall into that. That's why like I, I'd be like, you gotta seek, you gotta seek it's, it's the father. You gotta always for, repent for your sins because you don't know when you could go too deep, go too dark. And then you forget you forget what's right and wrong. And then you mm -hmm. just forget yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, 100%. like when you think about that, I, like what I was just thinking of in my mind was trend setting. Think following trends because there's there's trends you could follow where you fall down the wrong path, but there's also trends where you know how over the past over the course of the past year, I saw people on social media who were showcasing their journey back to Allah, back to Islam, showing that they they stopped committing certain sins, they started praying. Some women adopted hijab, men uh, started covering their aura more. They they started learning more Quran. They like basically getting closer to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala the best they can, and they were showcasing this. I was like, well, Subhanahu wa Look, you see the youth doing it, so then people are seeing it on their uh, mm -hmm. on their feeds, and it's influencing them. But then you can be influenced by the people who have certain specific views about issues. Like you're seeing in the world today, you're seeing people just following the trend of what they see online. They're seeing their favorite celebrity support this cause or this whatever, and they support it just because they see them support it. They don't do any research by themselves. They don't do, seek any knowledge by themselves. And this is the problem with like our society today. This is how you know humanity has failed because people don't do their own research. People don't think for themselves. They, they get, they've been given a mind, such a blessing to think for themselves, to ponder for themselves, to gain knowledge for themselves. Like. If you are not someone with mental illnesses, what are you doing with your life if you're not seeking that knowledge for yourself? Like you go ask people questions about Islam or something and they'll say, oh yeah, I don't know. I just think it's this. Like, what do you mean you just think it's this? Like you, there are resources all around for you to learn these things. Like, I bet you right now, if someone were to come ask you about Christianity, you can answer their questions mm -hmm. because you've done your research. If, if someone comes to ask me uh, certain questions, if I can't answer, educate me. Of course. Yeah, then now I become the asshole. Look, listen, even speaking about someone who, let's say, doesn't believe in God, one of the things that I always pose the question to people like this, like, oh, how can, like, one of the most common arguments you hear from these people, how can you believe in God when you see all these uh, 
atrocities happening in the world. And then you can ask them this question. What if God asked you, why'd you let it happen? Or what did you do to help? How are they going to answer to that? Yeah, how think are they going to Think about it. What did you do? Why did you let it happen? You let the atrocities and you let corruption spread throughout the land. What did you do, though? I don't know. And then at the same time, at the same time, we know that this life is a test, right? So everything is temporary. Now, this should just show them. Our ultimate purpose in life is not to, oh, it's supposed to be to enjoy or to live for our families or whatever, because not everyone gets that. Not everyone has an equal opportunity to that. So what is our purpose? What is our ultimate purpose? Our, our ultimate pur our purpose as human beings has to be to worship God. There can be no other sufficient answer than that. Because, you, look, everything else is going to be limited. Your family might be taken away from you. Your house might be taken away from you. Everything is going to be taken away from you. Your connection with God cannot be taken away from you unless you do it to yourself. And that's 100% factual. What, like, our sole purpose, like, this is undeniable, is because everybody who is physically capable, who is mentally capable, has an equal chance to worship Allah. Every single person, whether... You're someone who goes from partying to worshiping but Allah to being born into Islam and, you know, being on a, the path of Islam for your whole life. Everybody has a chance to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everybody has an equal opportunity. There's nobody left in the dust. And, you know, for those people who don't hear the message of Islam, they have it on the day of judgment. They have a test for them waiting on, on the day of judgment. But the fact of the matter is everybody has a chance. There's no excuse. There's literally no excuse. And what's, what's, the, what's there to lose? What's there to lose? No, you, struggle, you struggle, you struggle a little bit, and then there's what? Then, and then there's Jannah. But there's on. good smells. There's food. There's women. You want women? There's women. You want you want <laughs> you want wine? There's wine. Look, look, that's that's just even here after. I, the way I look at it is even here in the dunya, following Islam has only increased me. I can never say there was a time in my life where I followed Islam, I followed what Allah and His Messenger said, and it caused me more hardship, more hardship, or it caused me to feel distressed. It just doesn't make sense. Oh, knowing that I can turn to Allah, knowing that I can put my head on the ground, knowing I can go and turn on the Quran and listen to it and feel that peace. Like, there is nothing like that. If anything, I feel distressed up until the point where I do start making Ex dua. Exactly. Like, anything that happens to me, I say, okay, like, once I make dua, then I feel better. Because I just know, like, what just happened, I'm taken care of. Mm -hmm. And regardless, I'd be taken care of, but you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes when we come to Him. Even though He knows, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's the all-knowing. But he likes when you come to him with your grievances. How you go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first? How can we how can they say we're wrong for let's say being for gratefulness, for charity, for prayer, for worshiping God? How can how can we be wrong? How can we be wrong? There is no way we can be wrong. Think about it. There is nothing left for you to lose if you follow Islam, you follow Allah and His Messenger. There is nothing for you to lose. There's only great benefits from it, so I'd recommend you you get on it. And that's like this is a reminder for right now because the time that we're living in right now is going to keep getting more difficult because it's so easy now for people to start questioning their Lord because of what's going on in the Muslim Ummah, what's going on to the Muslims all over, all around the world. It's so easy to turn around and just be like, "Why is God doing this? You know, Why did you Allah know do this?" You know to what's us? crazy? You know what's crazy is that this like a lot of this. Uh, turmoil it happened in so so short it felt mm -hmm. like everything just took a sharp turn exactly just a couple it, months it, ago like, we we're talking about the earthquakes in morocco and talking about the earthquakes happening in different places mm -hmm. or, or the floods it, the floods yeah and then it just it felt like it took like like this was a strike like it just took a sharp turn i was like dang like how, you know how the muslims gonna recover from you this? know what's so crazy no major sign has happened yet and no major just, sign has happened yet and you got people out here, but look listen 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 this right here, Allah is the best of planners. Understand that. So this this could be Allah's, uh, this, no, this is Allah's divine wisdom to bring people to Islam, to bring people into Jannah. Look, look, just imagine, think about it. All those children who have been killed, who have been marred, they're all in Jannah. They're all guaranteed Jannah. Think about it. What, what better can they have than that? Exactly. May Allah give the people of Palestine patience, sabr, may Allah help them. Like, look, even reflecting... Back into my personal life, because you said that you know, there, there, there's people who they're going to start questioning their Lord. There was a time in my life when I said, like, why would Allah allow 9-11 to happen and allow it to humiliate us Muslims? Like, even to this day, like, we still feel the effects of it, the negative effects of it. But then I also researched into it. How many people researched Islam? How many people reverted to Islam because of the 9-11 attack, even though it has nothing to do with Islam? How many people entered Islam just because it was blamed on Islam?
They they say, oh, I want to see what this religion teaches. So they go and re re they research Islam. Now all of a sudden we have more Muslims. Think about it. And, that, and this should also show how strong of a religion it is. Because look, how can we be the fastest growing religion on earth, but yet the most misunderstood religion on earth? And name me another religion on earth that's gone under the same trials and grievances as Islam, as many as attacks as Islam has had. And still standing. It's exactly. Still the they the they they one hundred percent crumble. And a point that I that I love to make uh, before was, why is it that all these other religions, none of them agree with each other, but yet they all go after Islam, because they know Islam has not liberalized. They know Islam has not weakened. They know the Muslims are strong. It's not secular. It's, when it's, when when uh, when you have a strong Muslim who's actually grounded grounded in in his faith, you, you can't beat him. You lock him up, you give him more time with God. You kill him, you make him a martyr. You don't do either, he's still going to continue being a Muslim. There is no defeating the Muslim. If you have this mindset, there is no losing for you. It always, like, these types of things always bring me back to the time of the Prophet, Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and how often he was persecuted. I mean, nobody was tried harder than the Prophet, Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you have to Salaam. really think about that. Like, for many years... He was pushed out of his land, pushed out of his home. Like this is, these were people that like this tribe was the tribe he was born into and they persecuted him. They wanted to kill him. They threatened him. They bribed people not to even look at him or speak to him. Like this, and this is all because he was preaching that there was only one Lord. So you have to think about it. Like the strength that he had, this is what we try to emulate. We try to emulate this by following the Sunnah, right? Following the, the ways of the, the, the Sahaba. And the tabi'in, tabi, tabi'in, like the salaf, right? So you want to follow the way that these uh, men did things, right? Mm -hmm. The best of the Muslims, emulating the best of the Muslims. And when we think about that, what did they do? They sat down. They let these things happen up until a point where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed them to do so. Up until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you defend yourself now. Mm -hmm. And, that, and what are patient. we doing? See, but where we're at in the state of our ummah right now is... We're, we're at a crossroads because, you know, there's corruption spreading, but there's also people trying to, you know, follow the light. Like, they're trying to find the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, find thing. The, the light and the burdens from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because what happens if we achieve victory right now? Here's, here's, here's what I'm going to say. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm not confused myself or I'm not, I'm not like, distraught or, like, I'm, like, I know, I know everything, like, because I don't. I don't. But I will say one thing. Like, I'm not going to say, like, I have the answer, but I won't say one thing. Like, I have a answer. Mm -hmm. You, as a Muslim, you seek forgiveness for your sins. You could call to Allah, call to God, and you can try to make yourself better. Let, let this, let this right now, let, like, let this be, take this, take this sign, take it as a change. Let something good come out. Now, imagine every single Muslim did this. Where would we be? Miles ahead of where we are now. Like, I'm and not that's in your own, I'm not that's your, like, in your own personal life. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm, like, I'm not going to sit here and say I have the answer or even a answer. But, like, man, like, subhanAllah, like, even, like, what more, what more could you get from, like, if we had every single Muslim, like, united, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, on the same, on the same. Everyone's on the same, same page. page. Yeah. I say that type of unity, you only dream about that type of stuff, right? Because the... The plan of shaitan is not going to cease just because you think we can stand up and unite. Like, that's, that's something like, yeah, we, we can help for that. We can want that. But we have to be realistic with ourselves. Like, we have to look at what we were told in the prophecies of the Prophet, because at the end of the day, these are the things we look to. We look to the Quran and we look to the Sunnah. Because those things, they, they're going to have the answers. They, they, they tell you how to live your life. They tell you what to expect. Like what to expect in the times that are to come. And we're living in those times. We're living in times of difficulty. And acknowledging that is also acknowledging that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said was true. It's going to get hard. But what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do when it gets hard? What are you going to do when it gets tough? What are you going to do when the Muslims are suffering? When the Ummah is suffering, what are you going to do? Are you going to turn? Are you going to continue doing what you're doing? Going to the club, going partying, going smoking and drinking, doing, neglecting your salam, neglecting your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are you going to turn around? Are you going to start praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are you going to start praying for the Muslims? Praying for your family? Finding, ways, for finding a, ways to help. Yeah, praying doing for whatever a connection you can with be. Allah. Because we're living in a time where 
you're running out of time, bro. If you think that you can keep delaying your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, neglecting your salah, rejecting what it is to be a, to, uh, what, uh, rejecting what it means to be a Muslim, then you're just going to fail. Now, this thing about running out of time, 100%, we are all running out of time. I don't even know if I'm going to finish my sentence without the angels of death taking my soul right now. So this is your warning. This is your warning, a reminder for myself, us, and everyone who's watching to fix your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It can always be better. You know, before there was phones, before there was Wi-Fi, before you could call someone up, before there was Wi-Fi connection, there was a connection with God. There was a dua. You could call, you could call to Allah. I'm gonna just I'm gonna put that out there. But look, listen, look at the blessing of the phones. Like, look, we can know what's happening all the way across the world within seconds. Within seconds. But what 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 are we gonna what are we gonna do about it? Now but that we know. It doesn't even take a second for you to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't even take a second. Like just the thought of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your mind is you connecting with him. Just the thought that. The food that I'm eating is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a ni'mah. I'm not eating this food without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm eating it for his sake only. That's you connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You doing anything throughout your day, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking the remembrance of Allah, making dhikrullah. That's you connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not just your prayer. All these things that you do in your daily life, like these are you connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's not that hard. Really, a lot of people, they say, man, I, um, they say, I respect your hustle and your discipline to your religion that you don't drink and you don't do this and that. It's not that hard, bro. It's really not that hard. Even for Muslims, oh, you're... you're you make it hard upon yourself because look at it. It's no, here's the one thing though. I will say that to you, it may not seem that hard, but to someone else... Of course, else, we, we, all, we all have our cause problems. You, cause no, 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 because you got to understand some people, the knowledge that you have, the understanding of the world that you may have that allowed you to attain that discipline, some, another person won't have that knowledge or perspective. 100%, 100%. You always have to understand where people are coming from. So for them, for them, it actually might be that hard. And for them, it actually might be like, like giving up the world for them. Yeah. And look, we are, we're all constantly being tested, right? Like, look, I like, you know how hard it is to go, like, let's say on social media and look at people who've been shot or blown to pieces and stuff like that. Like, it's very graphic, right? Just looking at that is very hard to look at. And you, you just think to yourself, oh, these people are being tested. But I'm also sitting there being tested myself too, because how am I gonna take it? Am I really am I gonna help them or am I just gonna sit here and scroll past it? Am I gonna share the word or am I gonna sit there and scroll past it? Am I gonna sit there and try to ignore? Am I gonna sit there and press ignore or not interested on my feed? I'm being tested as well. Am I gonna be grateful that I'm not in their situation? Gonna be we're all we're all being tested. Just as much as they're being tested, you're being tested as well. Because you have no idea what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you on the day of judgment of how you reacted to something like this. Exactly. They have no control of what happens to them. But you have, a, you, you have the control on how you react, on what you do. Like, you know, they say the best ability is availability. But also one thing about being... Like, hold on. Ha. The best ability is availability. But another thing is capability. And acknowledging that you are not capable, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of allowing you to pray to him because prayer is a privilege. Being, uh, knowing that you are not capable, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of allowing you to raise your hands in dua. To think that, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more knowing than me, so I will look to him only. And knowing that, yeah, availability, availability is the best ability because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always available. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't rest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-hayya al-qayyum. He's, he, his life is the perfect life, the perfect living, the ever living, the everlasting. Like there's nothing that sustains Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except for him. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our sustainer, our provider. He is free of all that, free of need. So you have to acknowledge this. And you know, I think, you know, I think with that we can, we can close out this uh, podcast. Uh, um, yeah, make sure you guys ponder. Wallahi, make sure you guys like are thinking, make sure you guys are Actively doing what you can to um, reach out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who can change the state of us before, like, until we, like, change it in ourselves, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has the power over us. Mm -hmm. And we need to stand up together. Like Usman said, we really do need to do our best to stand up together, to stand with Muslims because we can't be fighting with ourselves when everyone else is fighting with us. Mm -hmm. Like, 
the Muslim Ummah is suffering and there's no sense in the Muslims making it worse for the Muslims at this point in, in our lives. Like and at this point in uh, how close we could be to the Day of Judgment, we have no idea. So you always live your life like the Day of Judgment is tomorrow. Like the Day of Judgment could be It's always near. Moment. You could die at any moment. Exactly. Like the Day of Judgment happens the, the minute you pass away, the minute you leave this earth. That's, that's your hour. So, you know, with that being said, Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullah. We ask Allah to ease, uh, ease the state of the Ummah. May He grant the Palestinians and Muslims all over the world uh, ease and patience and forgiveness. And we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to guide us. Amen. Amen. Now, with that being said, guys, we're open for correction. We're not scholars. We're still students of knowledge. So, uh, we're always open for correction. Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh.